was 18, uh, so about 10, 10 years ago, uh, first year of university. Um, I basically started getting these sensations, uh, the, the really uncomfortable sensations in, on the right side of my face. Um, and over maybe the course of six months, it, uh, this sort of feeling um, worsened to the point where um, I was in like this excruciating pain on the whole right side of my face and right side of the body. I think when you're just in excruciating pain uh, to, to the, the extent I was in 24-7, waking up and going to bed uh, with it, um, it's just hard to find motivation really to do anything. It's hard to um, think of your present and your future and your ambitions and um, I was just focusing on the one thing which was my health. It, it didn't really seem like anything was going to get better so anytime soon and I had absolutely no faith that any, I'd, I'd given up really. The GP sent me um, like a number for this community wellbeing service and I rang them up and um, gave me a sort of a, a short just questionnaire as to like just the scale of t how I'm feeling and scale of the concerns and issues. Um, and then I, I met up with, um, with someone at the local community centre and we just sort of um, went through what I'm interested in and what um, was concerning me and then we went over what that certain services what may, may help. They put me in touch with um, some counselling. Um, I think the biggest impact though was just someone who wasn't someone who unconditionally loves me right like a health professional show that much care and give that much time to just listen and just be present and invite you out for a cup of coffee I think that just um that was probably the biggest impact even though it might seem quite small uh I think it was such a a, a beautiful experience to for me to um have, i don't know maybe rekindle my love for just humanity in general nothing changed overnight some of my thoughts may have you know of wanting to maybe do something extra but but yeah overall my overall well-being and my health definitely um it was definitely gradual but it's, it's it was just implementing new things and um, using the resources available to me um, online, like pod podcasts about health and my motivation and self-care and self-improvement that um, I suppose gave me some role models. I actually ended up um, asking the, um, the person from the, the community wellbeing agent um, if they had any jobs going, because um, uh, after a few months when I really started to improve, I'd, I'd, I'd been so, um, um, I had such a positive experience from the, um, for, from the, the, the service that I thought maybe there was, um, maybe I could use that to my sort of advantage and, and I suppose give back in a, in a way. So I, um, yeah, I ended up uh, becoming like an apprentice for the service. Uh, now I am a uh, community wellbeing agent for the community wellbeing service. So I'm part of the team that uh, I'd been working with as a customer. Um, and yeah, now I, I love I, I love working in uh, there and and using my. Uh, past experiences to resonate with people and to um, really try and understand and uh, it yeah it really gives me a, um, a motivation to really to, to work hard and help help others that have been in situations that um, I can resonate with firstly like we're we're listening here and we can we can really just just um, let people speak about their concerns and um, and I suppose you could say we're sort of like the non-medical side of care so we help to um, 
guide people in the community to um, different groups or services that are relevant to uh, the, the complications that they're facing. Um, and really giving that extra bit of encouragement and, and support to help people to achieve what they'd like to. Um, and just making sure that people are accessing the relevant um, services, whether that's like um, anything from finance to housing and health. And so it's a, it's a whole range, but it's just making sure that uh, people that don't have any questions unanswered and um, any confusion about what, what they're entitled to and what they feel they'd like to be accessing. I first met Hadley when I was part of the team. Uh, so actually one of the community wellbeing agents um, and I remember the first time I met him, him coming into the office and meeting everyone um, and you could just see the he wasn't shy or anything like that it was he was a, a lad who was motivated and determined to help people um, and at the time we had a couple of people who were quite quiet in the team um, and even from the start, Hadley was kind of already talking to people, making sure everyone's included. Um, he didn't leave anyone out, no matter what you look like, how you talk, how, anything like that. Hadley was always going up to everyone and making sure everyone's voices was heard. He's not making just a big difference for our team, but for the wide community. Um, so he helps run a walking football group as well um, here at GR1. Uh, which helps people from all different kind of backgrounds, so homelessness, learning difficulties, mental health, illness. So, um, and he, again, wherever he seems to go, he seems to be the heartbeat of it. So within this football group, he's, you just have a look through the door and he's there playing, kicking about. Um, everyone's having a laugh of him, going up to him. Um, he's there giving high fives to people when they score, for example. So... Um, the impact he's had since coming in and taking on this role as a community wellbeing agent and social prescriber has been amazing. Within the community wellbeing team um, and at Home Group, we like to give people time to speak. Um, so social prescribing is not having like a time limit on any appointments or anything like that. So um, by giving in one of our appointments of Hadley, our community wellbeing agent, giving him time to speak and say his side of the story, actually made him feel comfortable enough then to eventually ask us, is there any jobs going? We always give Hadley, um, so something we call in home group, a brilliant conversation, um, where he can, it's just a one-to-one -one session with myself, um, so he can outline what his progression is, what he would like to do in life, um, and really, this, you know, the sky's the limit for Hadley. Um, and I would be very shocked if he's not in management or anything like that in the near future. I just hope, you know, maybe my, um, my own experience, um, people watching may, uh, may see it as a sort of a, see that there is hope in, in the world, really. Mm -hmm.